Time for our Week 10 Picks Against the Spread with Brad Crawford and Chris Hummer and our lines coming from Caesar Sportsbook. Now, guys, last time you went opposite on a lot of these picks, so we're getting some parity here now. You both finished 5, 4, and 1 last week. Uh, Brad, if my math is correct, you're 59% on the season. Chris, 57%, so we're still turning a profit here. But, Brad, after going 17 and 3, what's happening, man? <laughs> yeah, 5 and 4. And one last week against the spread. West Virginia TCU really killed me. TCU had a fourth and one late in that game. Went for it. 40-yard touchdown pass. And I had West Virginia plus seven and a half. I, I still feel like that was the right pick, Grace. I had West Virginia too, so I'm going to go ahead and agree with you there. All right, let's start with Alabama at LSU. Bama favored by 13 on the road. It's a night game at Death Valley with the SEC West on the line. Now, last time LSU was on the field, they had the comeback win against Ole Miss. Freshman linebacker Harold Perkins, a big reason for that. Brad, what kind of impact will he have against Bama? It's going to have a big impact. And like I have to ask myself, is this the week that Alabama takes out a season's worth of frustrations on a quality team? and puts itself back in the playoff picture. For me, Bryce Young has to be aware of Harold Perkins, the five-star linebacker at LSU, as you mentioned. He's a guy who, in a variety of ways, LSU's defensive coordinator uses him in multiple sacks this year, really gets after quarterbacks and harasses opposing passing games. I'm going to go with Alabama to cover here, however. Late touchdown, Bryce Young gets to cover. If this is a game that gets to 14, 14 and a half points, I would go the other way, but I think Alabama really plays well Saturday night in Baton Rouge and wins that game to get back in the playoff hunt. Yeah, I prefer this game at 14 too, but I'm willing to take LSU to cover here. I like Alabama to win. I think they're the better team, but it's nice to have a night game in Death Valley that matters this much. It's been a couple years. I think this is one of the most special environments in college football when things are rocking. The entire stadium shakes at the beginning of these games when LSU's fans get going, and they know how to tailgate, certainly. On the field, I think the question marks are, can a young LSU offensive line hold up against a fearsome tide pass rush with Will Anderson and Dallas Turner? And on the other side of the ball, can Alabama's wide receivers beat what has been an up and down LSU secondary this year? I have total faith in Bryce Young, obviously. But Alabama's playmakers have been a little inconsistent. I get the feeling Bill O'Brien will have some wrinkles this week coming out of a bye. I think LSU does enough offensively to stay in this game, but I do like Alabama to pull it out at the end. Chris, you're totally right about that Death Valley environment. One of the coolest experiences of my life. I think every college football fan needs to check that off the bucket list. Staying in the SEC, Texas A&M, on its first four-game losing streak since joining the SEC, they're hosting Florida as a three-point favorite. Now, quarterback Haynes King may be available, but it looks like it's Connor Wegman's team now. Chris, what's the change here for the Aggies? Yeah, I would just say Texas A&M can't lose five in a row, right? It hasn't happened since 1980, and they had a little momentum last week against Ole Miss despite the loss. Connor Wegman completely changed that offense. Um, Texas A&M broke the 28-point barrier for the first time in over a year against an FBS team. Connor threw for over 300 yards, which hasn't happened since Kellen Mond was on campus. A&M played with some tempo, which is really needed for Jimbo Fisher. I think A&M found something last week, and frankly, Florida hasn't stopped anybody this season. They have one of the worst defenses in the FBS, and I think A&M finds a way to manufacture a win here, and I like them to cover at 3-5 and five this season, this game is a must-win for the Aggies to ensure bowl eligibility, judging by the rest of the schedule. November's not easy beginning with this game. Texas A&M can take solace in the fact that last week, despite that four-game losing streak and falling to Ole Miss, the Aggies did have good quarterback play, as Chris has mentioned. And this Florida defense is really struggling, so I'm going to go with another favorite here. I hate taking chalk, but I'm doing it again. I'm going to lay the 3.5 points and take Texas A&M to win outright snapping a current four-game skid. To your guys' points about the Gators' defense, remember, they just dismissed Brenton Cox this week from the program, the Gators' best pass rusher and probably their best piece on that defense. All right, let's move to the ACC. Guys, love the state of Florida, the people, the beaches. It's great. What I do not love is the state of their football programs, the big three trying to return to prominence, and we got two going head-to-head, -head, the Knowles and the Canes. Florida State favored by a little over a touchdown. We know plenty of ups and downs for both these teams this season. 
and some recruiting drama. So Brad, what's going to happen in South Florida? Yeah, Florida State's one of the nation's most underrated teams, really a squad nobody's talking about. Three losses have come all against top 25 teams in ACC play, two coming down to the final minute of the fourth quarter. And the Knowles have that win over LSU, a team that's creeping up on the top 10. So meanwhile, Miami's a dumpster fire right now in year one under Mario Cristobal. There, there's no other way to say it. Miami is making a headway on the recruiting trail, but right now wins, losses, not looking good for the Canes. So I think Florida wins this game and what Florida State wins this game in a game that's not all that competitive. Yeah, I think there's going to be plenty of NIL investment made at Miami to help turn things around for sure. But that doesn't really help the team this year. There are a ton of holes. This is a very injured Miami team. They've struggled offensively without Tyler Van Dyke. He's not a lock to come back this week. And as Brad said, I think Florida State's one of the most underrated teams in the country. Um, had things gone a little differently, Florida State might be in the top 10 of the playoff rankings this week. They obviously have three losses by one possession, but I think they're seriously undervalued. I think Jordan Travis has a field day against the Miami defense that ranks 86 nationally in yards allowed per play. And after watching Miami last week against Virginia, I'm just not going to trust them enough to put money on them to score points and cover against Miami. I like Florida State to make a statement, and I like them to win and cover. Staying in the ACC, we have a battle of underperforming teams considering their preseason expectations. Wake Forest at NC State. Wake opened as a three-point favorite. That line has now moved to four and a half. And you know what? This number looks familiar, guys. The last time they were favored by that much on the road, well, they went out and gave us the worst quarter in college football history. Sam Hartman, six turnovers in seven drives against Louisville. But Chris, you're still picking the vet to outduel NC State's true freshman quarterback. Yeah, I, I don't think anything, I don't think you could have had a worse quarter than Sam Hartman had in the third quarter against Louisville. That was that was tough to watch, especially for a quarterback who's meant so much to Wake Forest. But that gives me even more confidence. Wake Forest bounces back this week. I think MJ Morris caught lightning in a bottle last week. He's a really talented guy, but I'm not sure how he can sustain that consistently week to week. He might prove me wrong, but I'm going to bet on the veteran in this case. Um, plus, Wake Forest has quietly owned this series. They've won four of the last five overall against NC State. And I just don't think, without Devin Leary, I just don't think NC State's going to be able to manufacture enough points to keep up with Wake Forest. I like the Demon Deacons to both win and cover. Yeah, I'll be the first to admit, I did not watch Wake Forest's loss to Louisville, but that 35-point third quarter, I saw the box score, and that really raised my eyebrows as to what in the heck happened to one of the ACC's best teams. As you mentioned, Chris, Sam Hartman had his worst game at Wake, worst game of his college career, in fact, and that's not going to happen again. This is a perfect bounce-back spot for betters to, to lay the points here, take the Deacons on the road. As you mentioned, NC State starting quarterbacks for true freshman N.J. Morris, Three touchdown passes against Vitek during that comeback win. I don't think it happens again. And this line, Grace, it continues to widen. And when that happens, the, the Sharps are playing the favorite here. So that's a good sign for Wake Forest. I'll take the Demon Deacons to cover. Yeah, and adding to that, NC State has failed to cover the spread in five straight games. If you like trends there. All right, biggest game of the week and the SEC game of the week on CBS. Tennessee at Georgia the Dogs opened as 10.5-point home favorites. That line has danced around all week. It now sits at 8.5, the first time all season that the spread for a Georgia game has been in the single digits. So, Brad, how does Tennessee cover here? I would have loved to have hammered Tennessee at 10.5. I did not see that opening line. That would have been a lock of the century for me. And my biggest question is, does this high-octane offense continue between the hedges? I've got Tennessee as my top-rated team in the country right now, number one over Ohio State. And Georgia's schedule, to me, has been awfully light this season since that opening win against Oregon. And I'm not sure the dogs are prepared for the pace of play that Tennessee brings to the table. If you add the fourth down factor in, Josh Heupel's sort of reluctancy to punt, I think this sets up well for Tennessee cover. And I'll probably join you know, all the Sharps in this and take Tennessee on the money line, too. So... Tennessee beats Georgia this week in between the hedges. Yeah, I wish I wish I was bold enough to pick the upset here, but I do love a Tennessee cover in this game. They have an offense that's going to test Georgia in a way that we don't often see, and particularly Stetson Bennett. Um, he's been really solid this year, and I think he's improved considerably from what we saw from him in 2021. 
when Georgia won a national championship. You can see the stats on the screen. Like, statistically, he's been excellent. But the two times that he's really been pushed to throw the ball a lot this season, Missouri and Florida, and games that were closer than the final score, or at least the result would indicate, he struggled. He threw inter multiple interceptions against Florida. He threw an interception against Missouri, and that game was tight throughout. I think in this situation, he's going to have to throw. Um, George is going to have to score to keep up with Tennessee. I think they do enough defensively to stay in this game and ultimately win it. But it's going to be hard, hard for Georgia to cover that line with the offense it has against the Tennessee defense that's actually been pretty frisky, at least last week against Kentucky. So I really do like a Tennessee cover here. Yeah, and Tennessee, one of the best teams against the spread, 7-1. and one. And remember, that one loss was the Gators' backdoor cover. All right, guys, let's do some best bets. Went 0-2 last week. So let's find some winners here, starting with Hummer's Hammer. Yeah, I'm going back to the Sunshine State. You mentioned it. We love the people. We love the beaches. Um, I do not like this Miami football team, though. It is a really tough watch week to week. And frankly, Florida State not only needs to win this game, it needs to win this game big. Um, Miami has a ton of recruiting momentum. Um, we saw Cormani McLean commit to them last week. That wasn't necessarily a head-to-head -head battle with Florida State. But Florida State could really use a momentum boost. They should have a better record than they where they sit. This team should have a ton of momentum. And you can create that by beating your rival um, on the road. I think Florida State really puts the hammer down, uh, no pun intended here, and wins by a big margin. I think the pun was intended. Uh, you mentioned momentum. That's a real thing. FSU 5-0 and against the spread in its last five games. Miami 0-5 against the spread in its last five home games. So looking pretty good there. All right, let's hear Brad's best bet. I hold Georgia's defense in the highest regard. A lot of respect for Kirby Smart. But the Dogs have not faced a passing attack, especially downfield with Jalen Hyatt, Cedric Tillman back healthy, really since Bryce Young in last season's championship game. So another point here is that Tennessee starting quarterback Hendon Hooker is almost 25 years old. He's not going to be rattled by a sold-out road crowd between the hedges, especially on third down where Georgia tends to feast on, on defense. So I'm getting more than a touchdown worth of points here to take the nation's top-ranked scoring offense and total offense i'll do that every time i said earlier i'm taking tennessee to win the game outright so i'll certainly take tennessee and eight and a half as my best bet by the way we didn't mention linebacker nolan smith out for the season for the bulldogs so that's hugely important mm -hmm. in a game that's a shootout all right good job guys let's make some money this weekend and thank you all for tuning in remember for more college football content like this like and subscribe to the 24 Sports YouTube channel.